And she goes, how old is he? I said, well, he just turned 16. She goes, that should tell you something. I said, he got a ticket? She said, but I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm livid. I mean, eight days, bills haven't been paid. I'm ticked. And so I've got a 20 minute drive home and I'm gonna use this time to pray, and, but I'm, I'm mad. It's Thanksgiving time, my in-laws are visiting us. They only come once a year. So I gotta deal with the situation, you know, and not make a big deal out of it in front of them. And so Debbie's got the, this is not the actual Thanksgiving day. This was like a few days before they came to visit. And so I'm, I'm there and uh, everyone's sitting down for the meal and I used to get in there and I just, I don't know what overcame, how, why, did, why was I overcome by this, but I was. And I, I looked at Jonathan and I said, uh, do you know where the mail is? And he goes, uh-huh. I said, where is it? He said, it's in the car. He said, just so no one would hear me. And I said it just like this. I said, go get it now. And I, why, do, why do I have to respond that way? You know, because he had, I wasn't getting my way. Just total selfishness is what it really is. And he looked at me and he said, no. <laughs> it's the first time he has ever defied me like that. You know, he's got two siblings sitting there, grandma and grandpa sitting there. And I'm thinking like, I know, I, beyond any shadow of a doubt, if I had said that to my dad, he would have killed me. <laughs> if he hadn't killed me, he would have at least beat something over my head. I mean, I'm telling you, I would never have done that to my dad. And so I've got these two other children in my household. I'm not going to let them be tainted by what Jonathan just did. So I'm going to, I've gained a little wisdom here, so I'm now going to eat my meal in silent rage. <laughs> and I'm going to wait. And when the meal is over with, I'm going to deal with him. And Grandma and Grandpa got up, they went into the living room, Jennifer and David went with them, and I said, Jonathan, just sit down, we're going to have a talk here. Debbie, would you stay here, please? Now I'm going to use some real wisdom. And I said, Debbie, I said, did you hear what Jonathan told me? She said, I did. I said, what type of punishment do you think you should give him? <laughs> Isn't great? I love that. And she said, well, first of all, Jonathan would never tell me no. I'm thinking like, oh, why does she do stuff like that? <laughs> and I said, is that true, Jonathan? He said, absolutely. He said, I would never tell mom no. He said, Dad, in fact, I'd die for mom. I'd never die for you. It's one of those moments, you know. I've been asking the Lord. I get up in the morning and say, Lord, Give me an opportunity to serve my kids today. He never does it in an easy way. So here's one of those moments where I know enough now not to respond, but to just think, God, I want you to change me. I want to reach my kids' hearts. And right now, this is not working, so what do I do? And God always says the same thing to me over and over and over again. He says, I resist the proud. Mark, you know this, but I give grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. The circumstances, Mark, that you're experiencing at this moment are designed by me, by my hand. Humble yourself under my hand and allow this to take place at this moment. And I will lift you up when it's time. But Lord, I can't let him get away with that. It's disrespectful and dishonoring. He said it in front of my in-laws. Let me be God, Mark. And you just wait. And I will lift you up in due time. I looked at Jonathan and I said, um, I said, uh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have talked to you that way. I shouldn't have been forceful in making you go get the mail in front of Grandma and Grandpa. He said, Dad, you know why I told you no? I said, no. He said, because you, I know you would have Seen that mail, and you knew I got a ticket, didn't you? I said, yeah. He said, you would have brought that mail in there, and you would have said something in front of Grandma and Grandpa. Dad, they're the only two people left on the face of this earth that love me and care about me and still think I'm something worthy. They don't think of me like you do. And I wasn't going to let you taint their minds about who I am. So I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. Please forgive me. 
I don't want to be that kind of father to you, John. I'm really sorry. He goes, Dad, I forgive you. He says, you're always messing up. <laughs> well, I learned a lesson that day. You see, he was disobeying me because of the amount of shame that his father had already cultivated in his life. He did not want any more shame. In children that reach a level where shame is so high, and so suffocating, two things are going to happen. One of two things are going to happen. They are either going to go inward or they're going to rebel outward. And that's what happens to our kids. The shame is so oppressive that they have to do something. And they will either become depressed or they will become rebellious. That's what I love about our God. Why? He releases us from the shame. He releases us. Hope makes us not ashamed. Suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope doesn't disappoint us. We have to be the ones growing in character so that our hope will be passed down to them. And they will learn that what we are willing to go through, they will be willing to do as well. They're going to be parents someday. Phew, this is emotionally draining. <laughs> be not, oh, by the way, Jonathan, the next day, came to me and said, Dad, I'm, I'm sorry for not obeying you when you told me to go get the man. I said, John, uh, thank you for that, and uh, I appreciate that. I said, but, um, Believe me, I'm the one that needs to change here. Right? But isn't that something? I gave back the Holy Spirit's job of doing the convicting. So often we get in the way of... We try to play the role of Holy Spirit in our kids' lives. Be not severe with behavior that is not disguised from you. Do not appear astonished or irritated to bad dispositions. We, we react out of fear. We think that if we will respond more heavily and more dramatically that our kids won't do it again. I can't believe you did that! Get over here! What's wrong? What? Do you realize what you did? If they realize it, they probably wouldn't have done it. <laughs> On the contrary, be compassionate to their weaknesses, this inconvenience, let's, let's skip that. Um, so often, we, especially as, how many have teenagers here? Okay, here, this, is a good, this is a great illustration for you. If you've done it the wrong way like I have, maybe not to the degree that I have, but if you've done it the wrong way for years, your children have a built-up reservoir in their lives. And this reservoir, when, when you continue to do things wrong, they're going to respond out of that reservoir of hurt and shame. And so how do you get them, how do you get to resolve and restore that relationship? By first emptying the reservoir. And the way that I had to empty Jonathan's reservoir was by not responding or reacting at all. He'd say something that was offensive. He, his, I would say to them, this is one thing I learned. Words were no longer an issue with me. Say whatever you want, Jonathan. That was his way of venting. That was our way of releasing the reservoir of shame and hurt in his life. As long as he didn't do anything illegal, immoral, and it didn't hurt anyone, say whatever you want, Jonathan. Because pretty soon, we were able to restore the words as well. And that really helped me a lot. I no longer responded to his words. That's what I was always responding to his words. And I, and I realized I've got to deal with something far greater in his life. I've got to deal with some hard issues. Now, if you've got younger children, we're not even talking about that. Younger children, you, they just need to see your model. You be consistent in your loving discipline. Make sure the boundaries you set are boundaries for yourself first. If you want your children to respond 